Today's seminar is uh, on the HVAC load reduction with building optimization. We are very much delighted to have our keynote speaker, Anant Ahmed Sun. He, uh, he is the pioneer uh, in green building consultancy in Bangladesh and providing a full range consultancy service. Okay, very Hi. nice. We hear, uh, we hear some of you and uh, many of you I did not hear, but uh, good news is we have 52 participants so far. So what I'd like to do that uh, rest of you can open the chat box and say hello to everybody with your name and location and position so everybody can see you, okay? And you can uh, uh, ask question on the chat box if you need it, okay? Or you can raise your hand and talk. So I will start the presentation. May I, please? Yes, sir, please. Uh, on to the, please. please share the PDF that we need to fill I will, up. I will. I'll, I then, will. Uh, yeah, please. That I have to. Uh, that I'll have to really give it to little bit later. I didn't have it. I have it in my PC. So I'm. Oh. Uh, can can you uh, can you allow me to share the screen, please? Okay, it is there. I guess. Would you see the screen, people? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, so you can very, see. Very nice. Very nice. So now. I don't see anything else but this game. Okay, so our uh, today our topic is uh, HBC load reduction with building optimization. Uh, to me, it is a very, very important topic, especially for you guys who works with this designing process uh, with the air condition system. And uh, this is uh, one of the item that in the building uh, require lots of energy. Okay, 50 to 60% energy in the building goes to the air condition. I'll go to the exact number in my presentation, okay? So that's why it is very, very important for us to understand uh, uh, HBC load reduction. And uh, now in these days that we hear uh, building decarbonization uh, that we are talking about uh, to reducing our carbon footprint, if we able to reduce our HBC load, then we can able to achieve our target. Otherwise, it's not possible. So much HBC is running all around the world. So you are guys are the very, very important part, very important equation in this process to understand uh, this uh, concept. So today I'll uh, go through uh, different kind of, uh, collecting different kind of uh, 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 information together. Uh, some of them uh, collide with the green building concept. Some of them collide with energy efficiency building concept. Okay. But it's all our uh, objective are same. So this is what we are going to do. And you already know me. Um, uh, I, my name is Anant Ahmed. I'm UGVC faculty with five credentials. Uh, I was in USA and Canada for 22 years. Now in Bangladesh, I uh, tried to promote uh, sustainability and uh, green building concept. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy to tell you that uh, I am the only person in the world uh, that has five credentials, UGVC faculty status, and UGVC silver membership for all of my organization. Why I say it? Because everything else I'm going to tell you today, I have the knowledge and experience to tell you that. So you can take that information and use it for your advantage. That's why I introduce you in this way. Another thing I want to tell you that with us, 360 Total Solution Limited, all information all the time is free for you. So if you need any information regarding uh, sustainability and green building, uh, then you can talk to us, uh, reach, back, reach, reach back to us or reach back to Faisal, you'll get it. Even the presentation that I have today, uh, you're going to have a copy from Faisal Bhai because a lot of uh, slides I'm not going to read. But I put the information in so you can check back later. Okay, so there's a lot of, I'm going to talk about the slide, but not really read the slide. I'm going to have a conversation with you. We have a, a green building and sustainable development information handbook. Uh, the soft copy is available, hard copy is available. You should have it. If you want to know green building or sustainability, uh, anything, this book says everything. It's a 160 page book. Uh, and it is approved by UGVC. Also, there's a three different rating system guideline is there. One is uh, new building, one is interior, and one is existing building. So if you have this book, uh, soft copy handy, 
you can use this as your reference point uh, for future. And you can ask the uh, first of all to give you the link to download. If you are not comfortable reading, then you definitely can uh, uh, go to our YouTube channel called 360 TSL Green Expert, where 60 plus uh, video is there. And there's so many different uh, project walk tour is there. So if you want to see a green building, if you want to learn a green building, if you understand the concept, you can go to our YouTube channel and uh, see those videos. It will be helpful. We do have a training video also. Okay. And every day uh, we upload new videos. So if you subscribe that, and I think you will have a good source. And most of the video are in Bengali and in English. So uh, many number of videos are in Bengali. So it will be very easy for you to understand. Okay, that's the introduction part. Now let's talk about, before we go to actual topic, uh, let's link our topic to green. What is green? Let's talk about that. To me, it's very simple. Use only what we need, no more. See, we talk about so many things, but if we just use what we need, no more, then we will be fine. I tell you why. If we stop wasting our energy, water, resource, material, health, time, and money in all area of our life and business operation, we do not have this problem. Our problem is because we are wasting so much of it. I'll show, uh, tell you how much it is. So let's talk about green in a different way. To me, green is the way to go, the best business decision you can make. Why? Because green will teach you a few things that normally is not in our practice. I'm going to give you four slides to understand green. Number one, green or sustainability will teach you to save energy, water, resource, money. If you save that four, earth will be saved. Okay. How are you going to do that? We change our behavior, innovative ideas energy efficient products and system, technology, efficient resource management, information and knowledge, future thinking, positive and responsible mind. If we think ourselves in this way, then we can find the way to save energy, water, resource. And to save, it does not cost anything. Green do not cost anything. It just create profit. Second thing it will show you or make aware of it, how to reduce waste, single-use plastic, how to reduce environmental pollution, how to reduce carbon emission. Mm -hmm. So if you do those, then impact on environment will be reduced. Okay. The, and how are you going to do it? Now we are talking about 8R, not 3R anymore. Rethink your choice. Refuse single use. Reduce your consumption. Reuse everything if you can. Refurbish all the stuff. Don't throw it out. Repair before you replace. Repurpose. Be creative. Reinvent it. And the last option is recycle. Just think. If we just think this way, I think we can find a way to reduce our waste big time. And this is the most important one. Increase. To become green, you have to be economically viable and the entire process has to be profitable to you. To you, to your organization, to your institution. Then you can do it. How are you going to be profitable? Improve indoor environment. This is the area I am so passionate about. Our indoor environment is not good. You may know from 1999, BNBC court made fresh air for all closed and air conditioned space mandatory. <laughs> Unfortunately, in Bangladesh, 99.99% air conditioned space do not have fresh air. And we live our life 90% plus time indoor where we do not have a fresh air. So as the closed space 
accumulate carbon dioxide from our uh, exhale, our breathe, it become toxic to us. We don't die. The carbon dioxide, something that we can live on, but the highest level of carbon dioxide in a space should be healthy is 800 as per ASHRAE standard. But if you have a carbon dioxide monitor, you'll find that you are living in 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 ppm of carbon dioxide. Why? Because you are exhaling the carbon dioxide without replacing the air inside your confined space. So our brain only use carbon dioxide, uh, oxygen to run uh, performance, uh, run better. But if I don't give our brain good oxygen level, then it will not perform the way it should be. That's why in these days we hear so much dementia, Alzheimer's disease, asthma, all this happening. And our newborn children getting autism and everything because just because lack of oxygen. I think every one of you should recheck your environment to see how much oxygen you are getting. Okay. So if you improve indoor environment, which is Ashray has a few standards for that then it will improve your health, it will improve your productivity, it will employ loyalty from the employee, and finally, if you are productive, you will be profitable. And lead or green building or uh, building optimization will teach you that. This is the most important part of it. And indoor environment also have few other things, lights. How much natural daylight you are getting how much fresh air you're getting with the proper oxygen level, the temperature, 24 to 28 degrees, sound level. What is the sound level you are in? Okay. 70 decibel is the number that we should target. Views, how much nature you can see. Humidity, what is the uh, humidity percentage in your space and the dust level. So it is our responsibility to first audit our space and then do the right thing to mitigate if there is a problem. Because this is our health. Okay? Without, without our health, we have nothing. And the last part of this fourth slide is that we have to take action. Knowing, meaning, nothing. You can know so much without doing anything, it will not produce a result. So we have to make a decision that we're going to be part of the solution. Then we have to make some plan, small or big, and then we execute that plan then we can have these sustainability uh, parameters met and we can uh, fight this climate change. Okay. And it should come from the corporate level, should come from the top uh, per, uh, management. Then proactive plan we need, the smart uh, implementation required. Uh, if it's an uh, institution like yours, you need team practice, everybody needs to be participate. And you can also think some ideas how you can say and always update your plan. So if we do these four things, we will be sustainable. And think of it. We all agree that we, every day, we are the part of global warming. We are causing it. So we should do also the mitigation part. Okay? Because there is no other planet we can live in. And today, if we don't do it, I think we are going into a very, very bad situation. So that's why we have to do it. And HBC is the one of the key component that we can fight that. We also know the global warming. You all know. I'm going to link global warming to HBC in a few short slides for you to understand the importance of it. So global warming, basically rise of temperature. Okay. And now we are almost, you know, 420,000 years after we are in a peak, this is 2010 graph, the graph went even higher. Okay. Where this carbon emission and global uh, warming happening is coming from CO2 emission. Okay. CO2 is a common uh, indicator combining everything as a carbon footprint and then uh, calculate that to understand. Okay. The building is 39% plus minus, someone said 38, someone said 40, uh, is culprit for carbon emission. 
the industry and transportation is is less and building means everything the materials constructions running the building maintain the building replace the building everything okay and also there is a part of residential the part of commercial unfortunately this is us data our data would be the similar just to understand the concept okay now uh, let's come to link this global warming this 39% emission to hbc uh, percentage okay Again, the 39, 33, 28, see what happened. Again, if you see the numbers in a different way, there's agriculture, there's a commercial, residential, industry, electricity is 27% of the total carbon emission. 27% electricity is the culprit of total emission. Now, out of this 27%, the 72% of that consumed by the building. Okay, why building do a lot of things? Building use the energy, use the raw materials. It has the vast output. It is use the potable uh, water. So everything together, thirty nine percent of carbon dioxide emission coming for the building. Out of that buildings emission, fifty six percent coming from the HVAC. 16% coming from the lighting, equipment 18%, other 10%. So now we come to a little bit more micro level, HBEC level. Let's link together. See, total emission is 100%. Electricity is responsible for 27%. Building is responsible 72% of that 27%, which is 19.44%. And HBEC is responsible for 56 of those 19.44% which is 10.87%, almost total emission, 11% come from HVAC. You understand that? How important this is? Okay. <clears throat> so anybody have any question up to now? Okay, very nice. Let's continue. So now, because this is so important, the HBC, and that including heating, ventilation, air condition system, 50 to 60 percent in Bangladesh and India. So HBC system for building shall be designed to reduce energy consumption while maintaining the interior condition at a comfortable level to keep occupant health and productivity. Okay, because again, remember, 90% of the time we are inside, inside the home, inside the office, inside the shopping mall, inside the car, and almost everywhere there is a air condition. So we have to think as a holistic approach. Now, this HBC system design should not only meet the standard on the energy front, but beat the standard codes like Energy Conservation Building Code, ECBC, India and American Society of Heating and Refrigerating and Air Condition Engineers like ASHRAE standard to achieve higher level of green building rating or sustainability rating. Okay. Also, in any commercial building has the potential to realize significant savings. So it's not just uh, we are saving the uh, environment. We are also saving money. Okay. So we are also saving money, which will help us to make more profit. And it's a significant. Okay. So this is important. This is important for us to do. So when, if we can start from the designing phase, now this optimization, okay. Yeah. If we can optimize properly, then the HBC load can go down significantly. I'll give you an example. Uh, one of my project is called Cityscape Tower. It's a commercial building at uh, Gulshan Avenue where around 5,000 plus square feet uh, per floor. And 
at the beginning when you do the HBC design, the load was around 30 ton per flow. Okay. And then we changed the design to green building concept or the building optimization concept. It's the same thing. Then we used some low-E glass. We used some cladding on the wall, put some insulation inside, outside, right? It came down to 20 ton, one third. Okay. So it is possible. And these days, if you do the designing of HBC system, you should do the simulation. Very, very important. Because when you do the simulation at the design phase, you can change the wall thickness. I'm going to talk about a little bit more later. The 5 inch to 10 inch, 10 inch to cavity wall. You can change the glass, regular glass to low E glass then low e glass to double glaze and then go double glaze to with argon right so how this will play out with the hbc load you know from the simulation phase don't do design or don't do uh, finalize the design until you have multiple options right and then you pick up the best cost effective option for your budget if we do that then definitely we can reduce lot of hbc load I will tell you uh, one bad news in Bangladesh with my experience with uh, uh, project visit that uh, consultancy services. Everywhere, almost almost everywhere, we are oversized on air condition system. We do air condition system on thumb roof, right? We do it um, say one ton to one and a half ton to two ton to three ton. We we feel like that if we do oversize then we get better results. No. The air condition will give you the intended uh, cooling performance based on its capacity. If you put more, it will not give you more. It will still gonna cool down the space to 24 degree or 23 degree, right? So that is the point. Undersize is also bad, but oversize is more happening. Now, what this HBC is, uh, do air condition does for us is cool down the space. Why is they cool down the space? Because it's getting hot at the time or when there's a sun, when there's a machine, right? And when the weather is hot, it gets hot, right? So if we can do the design in a way that our space do not get hotter, then we need less air condition, right? It's called solar passive techniques. The how can we reduce the heat gain so uh, we don't need that much air condition? I'm going to go in details very soon. So see this building, how we can make this building solar passive. That is the main area of interest today, that we're going to do this uh, building design in a way that our heat gain will be very minimal. Okay? And also the coal loss, right? The cold air going outside, that is also also important not to lose the cold air uh, with the leakage. Okay. So we only can achieve that if we understand the concept of building optimization. Okay. What is the building optimization in term uh, we say is in ASHRAE standard or any other energy related standard it will tell you that how much energy you should use for your per square feet cooling down or per square meter cooling down, cooling load, right? If you use more than that, then you are not optimizing the uh, building. So we have to know this number first, that what is our uh, cooling load amount, energy load amount for particular area in a region or in a city or in a weather and then how much we are doing or using to compare that if we do better that means we did everything that we can do uh, for building optimization so this is like theoretical i'm going to show you practical in few slides that you will understand much better way so there is a benchmark uh, in all different area uh, benchmark for air condition system, benchmark for ASHRAE, uh, uh, what do you call the fresh air system, benchmark for lighting, 
right? So we have to know those benchmarks. And then we can compare our design model with the benchmark to see whether we did good job or we did lousy job. Okay. So you cannot have an energy efficient building or green building without beating the beat, beat this benchmark. That we have to understand. Okay, and especially in your professional career, if you go into a uh, design phase uh, with the company and you find the way to save around 10%, 20% of uh, air condition load, that's huge. That's huge. Say one uh, uh, project has a one lakh taka energy bill, right? And 60,000 of that is from the HBC load. And you save and 10% of that. That means you save 10,000 taka per month for that company. Okay? If you can do that, you definitely can ask for rates. Okay? <clears throat> so, how we understand this building optimization? There's a terminology called U value. What is U value is? Is the value that bring heat transparent value? How much heat go? from one side to the other side, okay? And all our envelope, which is inside and outside, uh, 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 put us separate inside, outside, our building envelope, this envelope has a U-value. Window has a U-value, wall has a U-value, roof has a U-value, floor has a U-value. So if your U-value is low, 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 then your heat gain and cool loss is minimized. In our country, cool loss, uh, heat loss is not a factor, but in UK and Canada and USA, the heat loss is a factor. They have an opposite problem. So they heat their home in the winter time, but they get uh, lost to the outside and outside cold come inside, so they have to heat more. So they have to have very low U value on their indoor. Our situation is a little bit opposite. We have heat gain and cool loss options, okay? So U value, everything you can uh, convert to U value, I give you the formula and there's a software also uh, you can find out to understand the U value, okay? So with this U value, your objective will be reducing the cooling demand in a summer country, hot country like Bangladesh, reducing the heating demand in UK, Canada and USA in cold country. Reduce the, reducing the energy requirements for ventilation. So natural ventilation can come into play in your design phase. Reducing energy use for lighting. The lighting energy use is important because more lighting produces more heat. Okay, and then you have to cool it down. Okay, reducing energy use for heating water. Again, uh, this building optimization will help you on that. Reducing electricity consumption of office equipment and appliances. What equipment you're buying, uh, whether they are uh, making hot of your spaces, right? Say if you have a few printers in your office room where uh, you will sit most of the time, that place can get hotter and also contaminated uh, through uh, emission from the equipment. So can you put it there or put it somewhere else, right? And good housekeeping also very important, keeping the door closed, keeping the window closed and everything like that. So also technically in design phase, you have to think reducing cooling demand through this process. Controlling solar gain through glazing, reducing internal heat gains, making use of thermal mass and high ventilation to reduce peak temperature, providing effective natural ventilation if possible, and reducing lighting load and installing effective lighting control. So these are the technical terms we can do in the design phase. Also some strategy here, avoiding excessive glazing. Think about those glass houses. They put regular glass all around the building, especially in south side, east side, and west side. Now you cannot stay inside because it's too hot, right? And then you have to pull it down. In Dhaka, there's so many uh, buildings uh, make the glass uh, as a part of their design, which is really raise our cooling demand significantly. 
Okay. And funny thing is, they put the glass for daylight and then they really have to cover from inside with the curtain or uh, clothing or something like that uh, to reduce the glare. Now they don't have the lights, but they have the heat. It's already inside. Okay. So if we want to use glass, then we should think of shading, using some sort of louver or put glass in inside where the uh, direct heat gain is reduced, right? If you don't like that, then go for solar control glass, which you call Loi glass. Of course, it's more expensive, but it is your uh, choice. So then you have to use solar control glass to reduce the heat gain. That is called Loi glass. There's two part, two kinds of Loi glass. One is called hard coated Loi glass. One is called soft coated Loi glass, right? And top of that, you can have two uh, double glazed Loi glass with argon. And then you have a triple glazed Loi glass with that. So there's so many options on glass. Uh, so more uh, better option you choose, lower the U value is, lower your uh, heating demand, uh, cooling demand is. Okay, selecting equipment with reduced heat output. That's very important. Separating high heat load process from general accommodation. Okay, so separate them, zone them. Making use of thermal mass and night ventilation to reduce peak temperature. Have a design that at night, most of the building get cooled down. Give you an example. Say you have a landfill with uh, uh, sand and then at daytime, they become very hot, but they don't get cold enough uh, at night. So next day, get, they get hotter. And so all around your building, there's a sand getting hotter and emitting heat, which is touching the building and also going inside the building. So in our project, few projects, what you're doing where there's so much sand fill, we, in the top two feet, we put mud, muddy, right? So there's no sand, no bali. Okay, just to make sure that uh, we don't have the heat gate. We also try to uh, plant uh, trees all around this uh, landfill uh, sand that gets shaded as much as possible. Okay, so there is a way to mitigate heat gate, right? And also choose the light with uh, less heat producing light uh, so we don't get the heat gain from the lighting. And also, Think of a passive cooling strategy, how they will impact the building. Reduce heating demand if there's a requirement. Like now uh, in Bangladesh, the way it's getting colder, uh, we need heater in our room. Now we have that heat loss issues. Like all my windows now is uh, tipped out because I use heater. Okay, otherwise the heater doesn't work. So we also already have these issues with losing the heat at uh, winter time if you use heater. Okay. And limiting the exposed surface area of the building to the sun. That means shading, canopies, sunset, all that should come into play. Improve being yard tightness. Our window is not yard tight, which is a huge issue. So all our future projects should be yard tight, windows and doors. Okay. And reducing the energy requirements for ventilation. If you do this, that's going to happen. The building design is very important. I'll go into that little bit details in the next few slides. Effective window design is important. Mixed mode ventilation is important that somewhere I can use air condition and somewhere I just use the natural ventilation and fan if it's possible. Okay. So if you start, uh, uh, those are the strategy. Now, if you think of building optimization design concept, this is a very uh, huge topics. I'm just gonna give you summary because I cannot cover that uh, in a short time. So when you think of building optimization, you start thinking of the location, size, orientation, layout, materials, recycled materials, insulation, yard ceiling, you know, window and door selection, sustainable material, energy star appliances, LED lighting, water conserving features, efficient HVAC system, you know, how higher the COP is, should I go for uh, split AC, BRF, 
air cool chiller, water cool chiller, you know, uh, water cool magnetic chiller. So each of them has a different, different kind of performance, right? And then, of course, the uh, use of uh, rainwater to cooling down the around of the building, renewable energy, if you can do that for the solar, for your air conditioning system part-time, solar hot, hot water can be issue. So if we do all that, the building optimization can happen. So just give you some idea, uh, see the messing, both building has a similar square feet, but the right side one, option two has much less energy requirements because it does not get hot as hot as possible, the option one, okay? Of course, we have to have the land if it's possible, right? And then also how you do the sides, you know? If you're more square and more compact, our body has a heat that can be more heated, the left side one. Right side will be less heated because there is a window, heat going out, okay? Just give you, because this slide you're gonna have, so you can have details a little bit, okay? And building messing is the roof, also is part of it. Uh, how What is the roof, roof thickness? How much solar uh, heating coming through roof? I find in Bangladesh that a lot of people who uh, live in the top floor having a hard time cool their space because slab is very thin. There is no um, insulation uh, over deck, top of the slab, and there's no shading, right? So it's become very, 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 very hot. So that is also very important to understand the roof, messy, I'm sure. Now also understand the surrounding. If, if you can use one building to shade the other building, okay? You do the sun path analysis, right? At least see if we can get some benefit out of it, right? So we do sun path analysis uh, with all our projects to understand the heat gain issues. Then uh, we talked about the u value. Also the R value. U value comes from uh, a calculation with R value. I give you the formula in a few minutes. So R value is resistance, right? Mean more insulation. Just understand the basic, then you will be okay. And here ceiling we talked about, okay. Window door selection uh, is very important. That which window, because window has a U value, door has a U value, and also ceiling of the window and door framing is very important. Okay, if you have a equipment, use equipment that has energy star and less uh, heat output. Now come to our uh, main topic, HBC design concept, right? Have programmable thermostat, meaning you can make it more controlled uh, of the temperature that you are comfortable, with, right? Say if you like uh, comfortable with 24, set the thermostat on 24. If you are comfortable with 27, then put it on 27. Don't put 18, hoping that uh, it will come down quickly and then you, you will put it down or pull it off. Usually we don't do it, we forget. We start feeling cold, then we go. Okay, so programmable thermostat is very important. Do the zone. Where do we need more air condition? Where do you need less air condition, right? In my office, uh, we have the air condition in our rooms, but when the temperature, we pull it down to 26, we put the air condition off and just run the fan if it is a afternoon or evening time, because there's no heat gain after that. Okay, so find that kind of things. Efficient equipment is very important. Of course, your uh, HBC system is equipment. What COP you are using? Now our, our baseline is uh, four, 3.79 but I prefer four, or you go to five if it's possible, or ER, 14, 15, 16. There's so much efficiency out there today, but you have to select the product uh, according to your need, okay? And then also mini split unit, if you can use that. Now, if you have a uh, air condition, but do not have a fresh air, then you should go for ERV ventilator, energy recovery ventilator, right? Because if you bring fresh air from outside without the ERV, that fresh air will be hotter and your air condition have to perform more to bring that hotter air cool down. But if you have energy recovery ventilator, then uh, that air gonna come in is already colder. Okay, so it will use less energy doing that. In building, 
Optimization, you have to understand the envelope. We talked about that before. See the number, right? Each of the area of the building responsible for some sort of heat gain or heat loss. Okay? I'm going to go all of them in Bangladesh perspective in a few seconds. Just understand the envelope. You already may know that, right? And this you have to understand based on your location. Okay? Well, how your orientation of the building? Where the sun going to be? How sun goes from east to west, it is in your, your south side of the building or your north side of the building. Where the glasses of your building in south side or north side, right? So you have to understand that. So this is building envelope. Roof, subfloor, exterior door, window, and exterior door. Let's see how we can improve this envelope. Okay. So see this particular picture. There's a insulation. There's a five inch wall and they're using insulation and inside that they're going to put some cement block. So the UV value of this particular wall will be very, very low. Okay, just give you an example. I'm going to give you some example in Bangladesh perspective. Okay, so when you talk about this U value, then you have to know the solar heat gain coefficient of each of the material that assemble the wall or window. Okay, each of the material together will give you a combined SHGC, solar heat gain coefficient, okay? So you will is very important. We talked about this in below, and there is a uh, uh, calculation, okay? If you use this, uh, cal uh, this formula, you can find out the U value of your assembly of the wall, okay? And you can find this formula in the, in the, uh, online software also to evaluate the user. Or if you don't find it anywhere, then talk to us that I'm going to do this kind of wall. What's the UV value? We try to find out for you. Okay, this calculation is there. Now, there's, this is some example of UV. Okay, external wall, roof, floor, window. Uh, these are the UV value of, of, of uh, some example. But next one is very important. What is a good UV? Look this one and this one. Good is lower, right? External wall here is 0 0.0528. Just give you one to understand it. Here, good UV value is 0 0.0352. We are talking about uh, per square feet. Okay. Uh, same you can talk about in the meter also. So now, if you think of lead, lead one this. Because lead very much uh, perspective based. So they say, okay, give me your value of external wall 0. One, two, four. That is a lead U value baseline. So if you want to do efficient building, your wall U value or roof L value or floor U value, window U value should be lower than this. Okay. Let's see what is uh, comparable. Okay. Limiting good and lead. See side by side. Now you can see all of them. Uh, and then figure out how low you can go. Let's see how low we can go. This is in Bangladesh. In roofing, top of the roof, we used to have a jol chart. Now it's not there. But we can use that. Also, we can use polynum and then put a one or two inch dhalai. We can put uh, this foam, styrofoam, or we can use this polynum concrete, which is very, very good uh, for uh, over deck insulation for the top floor. Okay. To make it easy, what we did, we put some U value side by side. Option one, option two, option three, all these are possible in Bangladesh, right? So now, whatever you do in between of these six options, now you know the U value, okay? In Bangladesh, number two is the most cost effective one. There's a styrofoam we can use, right? 0 0.132, which also meet our requirements. But you can also have your own ideas, right? Even today's days, it's not here. There's a tiles called cool roof. Okay, you can use that. Just think of reducing your heat gain. That's all. So that's for your roofing. Top of that, you can have your cool roof options. After that uh, insulation, you can have a vegetated roof, have some sort of gardening. You can have SRI paint, or you can have a solar. They also reduce your heat gain significantly. Okay? Because roof has the biggest surface exposed to sun, which brings a lot of heat inside. 
So these are the options. So these, these all are available options to you. Let's talk about wall. Okay. See, these are the items that we use in our wall. The uh, ceramic brick, tin hall, clay brick, uh, cavity wall with ceramic brick, cement block, and three hole uh, hollow brick. Okay. Now, this is the U value of the wall. You will find that the number two with the hollow brick U value is 0.265. Okay. Which is very, 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 very easy to do. Come, of course, uh, the first one is uh, better, uh, which is cavity wall. But if you do cavity wall, you lose two, three inches of space in between. Also, there's a uh, possibility of water penetration. So I prefer uh, number two. Idea is this hollow brick and the clay brick almost cost same for uh, wall, but this is much lighter than the clay brick. Uh, so that is the option. Of course, you have a op good option with the cement block if you can use it. Uh, uh, it depends on the wall that uh, what is this wall will do for you. If you do want an alteration and everything like that in a wall, then the cement block is not an option. Okay. So, with, in Bangladesh, you can have all these options for you. Now, this is a comparison between three hole hollow brick and ordinary brick. The cost is almost the same, but U value is a big difference. Okay, the clay brick to hollow brick. So, what I encourage everyone, just check all the options, how low you can go on the U value. Okay, for the one. Same with flooring. Okay, what is kind of tiles you are using, which has a elements of heat gain or heat loss or cold loss? Check it out. Then the main culprit of heat gain is called window fenestration. Okay, there's a huge guideline on that. So window wall ratio is very important in lead or any building optimization. You have more window, less wall, you have more heat gain because glass is always has a higher U value than wall. Simple as that. You go to a building and you touch the glass, you will feel the warm. Mean heat is already inside. Right? So in, in lead, uh, the window wall ratio should be less than 40% must. We prefer around 25%. The window wall ratio should be 25% uh, glass and 75% wall. Okay? Especially in south side, west side, and east side. And then also what kind of glasses you're going to use. Right? That's very important. Uh, what kind of window you're going to use? Open out or sliding or there's a louver. Okay? It's all up to you to choose. And we have to do this glass thing with sun path analysis to see the shading. Right? Good news in Bangladesh now, uh, there are some architect and some facade designer understand this louver very well and they're using it, which is very good. Right? So when you have a louver or shading, then you can have lower heat gain. Long time ago, we used to have something called sunset, top of our window. I don't know, some people want to save money and take it off. Now we have direct sun inside the room and we then we put the curtain on and then we put the lights on, okay? But if we have a good shading, there's no glare, then we don't have a problem. So these days we are going back to uh, canopy shading uh, or louver. See this building? The All the window is in the void inside. So they're never going to have a, any glare. Okay? And they're never going to have a heat gain. This kind of canopy you can do, this kind of shading you can do to minimize it. Now, we have to understand one thing. If we employ any of this uh, methodology, then we should recalculate our HBC load. Because if we do everything, reduce the heat gain significantly with combine of all this methodology, but you do not do the simulation to find out your load and you do in thumb roll, then all this mitigation will not save your energy, will not save your money. Okay, so think of that. A lot of example is there in French station. Now see the glass option. Okay, 
the 6 mm glass u value is there shanghai pil clinton loi glass there uh, pil clinton usa loi glass there and saint gobins glass is there i prefer to do a calculation before i choose the glass to see the additional cost i need for these glasses when it will come back from the savings of hbc if that savings does not come back to me in 3 to 5 years i do not prefer loi glass think of it why because sustainability have to be a cost effective manner is have to be economical he cannot do something that is not economical then the company the business does not make sense so that's why i run a small calculation for you okay this is a 1000 square feet rooms if we put regular glass and loi glass what will happen we can reduce the hbc load by 13.2% this is a real simulation if we have a loi glass on the same space think of it 13.2% with loi glass that's a huge reduction if we have a say 100 ton ac now we need 87 ton ac of course loi glass will cost you more but that cost is coming back from savings reduction of the hbc load and the running cost of the hbc loads for next 3 to 5 years all sustainability investment should coming back to you preferable 3 years maximum 5 years this is very important otherwise people will not do it but if you do not run the simulation if you do not do the calculation and don't give it to the owner then they will not do it for you they will just see the uh, initial investment part right i able to uh, convince a lot of people doing this because i can show them this number that it is beneficial to them in short term long term the last segment of this building optimization is called driveway remember we talked about sand fill with the sand is hotter this is another area we make a lot of rcc pavement and make that rcc pavement very hot and they emit heat all day that goes into the building but if we have uh, all our driveway and uh, space uh, is called grass grid paver or open grid paver then it will not get as hot as complete rcc but these are strong the truck can go in this is both of them are my project and all the heavy truck will go in but it is does not get as hot as rcc so all the driveway also plays important role uh, to reduce the heat gain uh, a few of our project we did another thing that around the building there's a small water uh, uh, water uh, pond kind of things right it's rcc but there's a water the water vapor up and then cool the air inside we get one or two three degree reduction of the heat, heat gain so guess what what time it is question and session question and session uh, if it is a uh, it is a live uh, uh, thing then i could pay you money but uh, i cannot do it here no? okay so now anybody have any question uh, if any of our participants have any question to uh, about this uh, webinar to sir you may ask now sir actually i Sorry, actually, yeah, I yeah. have uh, a question. Yes, please. So you discussed about the uh, polynomial insulation sheet in this presentation, right? Right. So how much efficient or effective uh, polynomial insulation sheet can be for cooling of the roof in Bangladesh perspective? Because in my school, there was a layer of uh, polynomial insulation sheet on the roof. But when we, have, uh, we had class on the uh, top floor, uh that was still pretty hot uh, up there yes okay very good question first of all is insulation the second question will come the u value of this insulation now if you increase the thickness of this insulation then u value will go up what happened 
as a common practice, we put 6 mm, 6 milli, which is not enough in Bangladesh perspective. I have this project that just recently got 106 point, which is the best green building ever in the world. We put 18 milli of insulation under deck. Okay? And top of that, we put the solar and we put the SRI pen. Now that building don't get hot. Never in this last summer is only get up to like 29, 30 degrees in the hotter day. And we have a very good air flow. Okay. So you uh, organization need to revisit the required thickness of the insulation and some other mitigation, which is called SRI paint at the top of the sheet. Then I think it will be okay. It's still, it can, we, can, we can manage it. Okay. Yes, sir. I got it. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other question, please? There's yeah, one please. thing. Yes. Uh, okay, I would like to ask. You mentioned about you mentioned about the driveways, but right. usually for the buildings, which is uh, for them, the driveway area is usually very small as compared to the uh, air heat gain you can say from the surrounding. Uh, so, in many cases, uh, we don't uh, consider driveways. So, what would be the optimal range we should start considering the impact of the driveway on our uh, buildings? Okay, very good question. I tell you what. One mitigation may not solve your problem. Say, I have another project. It's called Aman Graphics. Right? It's a very small shed, very old shed very less height, you know, it's only 14 feet high. So this shed was getting very hot uh, in summertime. So we literally make a, outside the wall, we did so much plantation, the entire building went inside the plantation. Now it doesn't get hot. Okay, so you have to use the plantation, you do the little bit of open grid paving, some insulation, like I have a project that I put gypsum board inside the wall because they, they construct that building with five inch wall. I say, which five inch? I cannot give you the green building certificate because wall building is not efficient. So you have to increase that wall uh, another five inch. They say, no, I don't have any space. I said, then put gypsum board inside. Then the heat gain reduced and we get certificate. So it can happen. It depends on uh, multiple different mitigation can come into play to reduce your heat gain. Okay, thank you. Sir. Anand sir, thank you very much. Thank you very sir, much. For, you for are your... so patient to hear me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> no, I, I am hearing you. Thank you very much. I think it is very, uh, very, uh, very good and beneficial to the students, actually. I think uh, there are some students very highly interested. The topic uh, nowadays, actually the green building technology, how how it advances in our country, the green building technology. I think very fruitful your discussion, very, very nice and fruitful actually for the students. Actually you, nowadays, sir. nowadays the uh, world, is, uh, world is going to move actually, how the green building technology actually can benefit for the people. So nice right. presentation and I, it's up to you, actually. I have nothing to say whether you will continue for how long. <laughs> it's no, your no, we are done. No, the, what happened is there's so much information. What I like mm. to do for everyone, just to give you a hint, that there's opportunity for you to contribute. Okay? Mm. Each of us uh, contribute. Then it will be better for us. And it is also financially viable. Uh, mm. In my uh, practice, I save 20-30% uh, of energy for each of the projects that I touch. Therefore, they become so beneficial. So they ask me to go and do more building. Give you an example, the same Aman graphics that I did a while ago. Uh, and this building becomes so comfortable for the occupant. There are five other projects surround that project. So the other people from the other project, when they assign to this particular certified building, which is get 90 points that time, they don't want to go back to the other, hotter project. So the owner become bound to complete all their project in a comfortable manner. Now they mm -hmm. sign with us another four project for green building certification. They already mm -hmm. have a certificate, platinum, but they need no more certificate, but they want to make sure 
all their project is comfortable to the people. Mm -hmm. So now we are doing four more projects. I have that signing ceremony in my YouTube channel. Anybody interested, you can hear Mr. Saiful uh, Shaheb, what he said about the uh, achievement that we have. So green building is not a certificate. It's something to save you money and make your space more healthy. Yes, I'm always there. <laughs> Tell me. Actually, yeah, the thing is that I, I mean, uh, hear the green stuff from a long time. Though I'm not sure how much I practice. Few at least I have started. Like, uh, I mean, uh, whenever I'm not in the room, at least switching off the I mean, lights, at least from those simple things. Uh, I have started and I, I remember that uh, you have a long list uh, that uh, the tasks that we can do in daily life right? Uh, to save the energy. Thank you. So thank you uh, for the session today and I hope thank actually we'll be having more, I mean, uh, such sessions with sure. uh, some, I mean, a variation of the topics. And also maybe in the same topic, because actually there is no end of the discussion, because the thing is that the importance is so much on such topics are actually uh, is, um, I mean, uh, it, it, I can put it like this, that if you read a book or anyone is read a book one time, they understand the book in a way. But if you read it five times, in the fifth time, you will understand the book in a different way. So actually... There is, I mean, I don't think that if you give the same lecture five times, maybe it will be better for us to understand. So I uh, <laughs> hope to have uh, more sessions. So thank you so much. And thank you for your time, Shirley. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And again, anybody have any question, please ask later also. Uh, but you have my number, get my number my, from the Faisal Bhai. Uh, you can reach me on my email, is my Facebook page or my LinkedIn page. And then, you know, just know. And all these guidelines, if you want, ask for it. I also share the presentation with uh, uh, with Faisal Bhai. I tell you one very important thing, okay? It's very important for everybody who last till now. If you complete the evaluation form that I give it, going to give it to Faisal Bhai, you will get a certificate for today's participation okay so you'll get a literally a certificate that you participate in this uh, webinar if you give the evaluation form completed to Faisal Shah okay so that's my offer to you thank you Absolutely. thank you thank you <laughs> thank you we so are much, always yeah. unique with ideas <laughs> thank you so much thank you sir thank you thank, thank you, you sir. thank you so much thank, thank you, you for your time thank you thank you thank you